the last day of Eurovision Econ 2014. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Masao here, uh, who will be <coughs> telling us a few, uh, a few things about some useful tools he's supporting to, to the BSDs. So, take it away. Uh, hello. Uh, thanks for attending. Uh, my name is uh, Masao Uyabayashi, uh, coming from Japan. And uh, I'm self-employed. Uh, I have my own company uh, doing uh, BSD, hopefully uh, BSD development. And uh, now uh, I'm working for a customer uh, who is developing a network firewall product based on OpenBSD. And uh, <coughs> they their business is really good, and uh, they are developing a uh, good product and extending OpenBSD, and they have some uh, local uh, extensions, uh, including uh, a networking related daemons. And uh, it works, but uh, they also had uh, experienced uh, some troubles, problems, and um, especially uh, memory leakage because uh, networking demons run for a long time, and uh, it, it's it's called it. But if it's called it battery, uh, it's slowly uh, leaking memory, and uh, it end up with uh, severe problems. <coughs> and they wanted to fix uh, it, but. Uh, Finding those uh, dynamic uh, memory leakage is very difficult. And um, actually, uh, there are not, not so many uh, options uh, to find those memory leakage, uh, memory debugger. So uh, they decided to uh, port a uh, bare green, uh, which is already. Um, which has already proven its usefulness and uh, found uh, many problems in Linux. And uh, <coughs> so, uh, for thing, uh, previously people already put it background. Uh, it's not really used wisely, wisely, uh, wisely but uh, <coughs> they have put it and. Uh, it's, it is said to be working. But um, if there is still um, a big uncertainty if it really works on OpenBSD, because OpenBSD has many uh, local uh, features to make it more secure. Uh, but um, my customer is very good, and uh, uh, they are generous, and uh, they allowed me to work on this uncertain uh, project. So, <coughs> and uh, my pro my porting project is not really finished, but I have I have reached to a point where uh, I can finish this product project. And um, so, I just want I want to show you first that uh, it's it really it's really working, and uh, it it's real. Sorry. Um, uh, has anyone tried uh, barreling for OpenBSD? No, okay. It's not the really, uh,
Uh, I think uh, some problem. <coughs> it worked 30 minutes, 30 minutes ago, but just give me for one minute. I think I can show you later. <coughs> it's very close, uh, just uh, from there, but uh, it's a little difficult for now. Uh, anyway, <coughs> so um, I think I suppose uh, all of you al already had the name of Bargudin, and uh, you already know uh, how you how to use it vaguely. Uh, it's um, it's basically it's most uh, known as a memory profiler, memory debugger, and uh, uh, actually um, it has more features internally. But for now, uh, I'm only working for uh, porting a memory profiler, and uh, porting all of them is a little too work, too much work, and uh, uh, it's basically for. Uh, developers because it helps development and uh, actually uh, it can uh, run um, unmodified programs so uh, we can use it uh, just users can use it but it does not help um, to accelerate um, watching <coughs> movies something like that. just throw things down so it's not really helpful and um, well, our bargaining work is not finished, and it's it still has bugs. So, uh, if you want to use it now, you have to debug bargaining. That is not fun, but uh, but still, I need some help from you to uh, stabilize. And the uh, detect. So um, I don't want you to involve a bargaining dev development uh, deeply, but still. So uh, I need uh, some help from advanced users. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, so uh, I set uh, three goals in this uh, presentation. First is more. Uh, involve more people and um, explain its internal uh, and I want to focus uh, especially uh, three things that is uh, syscore, system core and uh, exec VE. Um, when Bargreen uh, executes a debug target prog program, it internally does uh, what kernel does uh, for uh, exec BE. So her uh, bargaining has to uh, simulate what kernel does <coughs> in exec, exec BE. And uh, it has also has to simulate a uh, signal which is a little very fun. Um, 
ideally, um, Belgrin uh, can work without any uh, fix changes against uh, NetBSC or OpenBSC locally. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I need, I have found some changes to be done. So I have to convince the um, community to accept those changes. <coughs> so uh, you can see uh, this explanation on, at the official site of Bargrind or uh, their papers that uh, Bargrind is a framework for a uh, heavyweight dynamic binary instrumentation, which is a little too difficult to understand for me. And uh, you can also see uh, Wikipedia, and uh, it says it's essentially a virtual machine. So uh, this is much easier to understand, and uh, in my opinion, it describes uh, the things uh, more correctly. <coughs> so uh, it's, it's basically a virtual machine and an emulator. And uh, once it starts to uh, start running, <coughs> What it does internally is basically a loop which uh, interprets a client debug code and uh, disassemble it and uh, execute those uh, instructions one by one. It's basically uh, what it does. And um, instead of actual, actual resistors, it has a virtual. Um, resistors in memory. So uh, if you see uh, some move instruction which moves a uh, value from one register to another, what it does is just copy uh, that value in virtual CPU. This is the basic. This is another view arm. Bargain is special in that uh, it executes uh, direct targets <coughs> within the same address space. It's one process. Bargain runs somewhere in one process address space, but still target client, target program, is mapped in the process, in the same process. This is very special for Bargain, I think. And uh, but still, um, uh, actual stock uh, given by kernel is used by Bargain by itself, by itself and. Uh, um, client stock is allocated somewhere else. So, slightly um, for clients, it's basically the same. Uh, it does not know if it, it is ex executed in background or not, but still uh, there is uh, some difference. Um, You can see uh, many uh, documentations and the papers at bergrind.org, and um, which is good. And my project is based on uh, FreeBSD reports uh, hosted at uh, Bitbucket, and uh, I could just fork that branch. Okay. Um, this is our view, our static view, um, how the code is um, structured. Um, in, in essence, the uh, background is emulator, and um, they have emulator code, which is very portable. In that, um, actually, I had to change uh, no code in the cent central core emulator. Uh, it's called 
vex, I had to change nothing about it and uh, except uh, some uh, basic type of definitions in headers, but it is written in portable way. And it also has to uh, <coughs> interact uh, Cronef to do uh, many uh, realistic things like a system call and signal or something like that. And uh, uh, to, to port bargaining, I, I, I had to uh, modify those parts, which I'm explaining. And uh, actually, uh, those resources bargaining, bargaining project uh, provides uh, papers are uh, all about um, emulated and uh, theoretical, theoretic parts and uh, realistic part. There is no documentation. That is the problem. <coughs> so there is uh, some numbers. Uh, many uh, machine dependent parts and uh, if deaths. Um, so some, they have some definitions to for uh, if deaths. I can see on. Um, You cannot expect a uh, quality of code like BSD. I can. This is a typical example. They have in single <coughs> dot CPI. You see uh, one if def VZP. P means a platform and x86 Linux specific coder, <coughs> like this, and AMD64 Linux, like this, and uh, like this. So um, this is not beautiful, but it works because they already have um, You see, uh, error burn. This one. If you forget to add uh, your platform definition, you see a uh, compilation error. So this is not beautiful, but it helps to do development. So uh, if you port Peregrine, just get used to it. <coughs> Um, so, uh, Bargudin is basically uh, developed for Linux originally, and but it's it's ported and uh, um, ported for uh, Darwin and um, Android, which is almost Linux, and the uh, Darwin code is already merged into their official branches and. Uh, as I said, uh, there is a free BSD ports, but uh, unfortunately, it is not merged uh, into the official branch. I don't know the reason, but uh, uh, their page uh, declares that uh, uh, free BSD port is maintained out of tree, which means they don't have, they don't intend to merge free BSD code. Um, I initially uh, wanted to merge my work, the uh, BSD, FreeBSD ports, into the uh, main tree, but I have changed my mind, and uh, I think we can uh, maintain uh, external our changes as external port. 
as far as we don't want to extend the basic functionality, just maintain uh, for it. And, uh, and now uh, we have good uh, version control systems like Mercury, uh, Mercurial. It is doable. So I think uh, I'm, I'm happy with uh, maintaining ports in Bitbucket project. Um, my work is kind of between uh, alpha quality and beta quality. Um, at first, of course, uh, it didn't work at all. Like, um, it's, I'm calling initial development a stage. And um, after that, some limited most simple programs uh, start to work, but at that time you don't you still had no idea if test code had bugs or bugged in the head back. So uh, you had you see some problems. You have to debug both things, and uh, bugged in is. Uh, basically a debugger, but uh, if debugger is ha has a bug, it's very confusing and it's not really fun. <coughs> um, so uh, I'm, I'm now trying to uh, hard to make the situation from here to and um, no legible um, developers who don't know Berglin can uh, test and help. Yes. No. <coughs> uh, so uh, I want to uh, explain a um, system call. Uh, actually, um, Berglin has to simulate a system calls, so uh, I have to uh, understand system calls to simulate it. And um, system call from our user application point of view, it's a C function. But internally, um, it's, okay, uh, this one example is this OpenBSD's uh, lead system call. If you call us lead system call from up your court, it's just C function and jump, jump this here. And internally, there is a few uh, instructions and uh, real system call uh, instruction is here. <coughs> mm, this is M. Uh, it has more arguments, so uh, a little more code. Um, And uh, basically, uh, from kernel or from CPU, uh, system core instruction is just one of uh, traps or exceptions. And uh, um, when uh, application when application code is running while running, and uh, uh, it ha it gets uh, hardware interrupt, uh, CPU and the kernel try to uh, save all context registers into uh, some areas are called a uh, trap frame. And uh, after CPU uh, finishes those uh, tasks, it just restores those information back into a uh, CPU and just returns back to application. And uh, applications uh, does not notice uh, that uh, it was in, uh, intervened, interrupted. For uh, system calls, um, it's very similar for uh, for kernel's point of view, and uh, it saves um, state into trap frame um, as well as as well as uh, for uh, interrupt. But um, this time, 
application voluntary uh, calls uh, exception uh, traps, and uh, it wants something, some information, or it wants to do uh, something uh, for kernel, and it when it it comes back from kernel, <coughs> it sees uh, some something changes like uh, memory, some memory uh, areas are written or it was read by kernel or some and uh, some registers has changed uh, for uh, returning values. So it's basically a trap. And um, while uh, entering kernel, a kernel does the things for our application and uh, it changes, it modifies uh, where? Uh, it, it's not written. It modifies trap frame struct and just uh, return back to application. So kernel has to uh, change uh, trap frame. And it also all saves some state uh, on struct too. So uh, Belgrant has to simulate this, and uh, it uses system for both for uh, emulate uh, both for application uh, to debug target, and it also uses uh, system call for itself. And uh, Belgrant uh, does not rely on host libc uh, for some reasons, uh, including uh, to avoid uh, symbol conflict. I don't know uh, all of them, there, but, but uh, it does not uh, use libc calls. But uh, instead, they has uh, its own uh, sys uh, system call wrappers and uh, uses it, for example, uh, just open a debug target file, uh, lead its elf headers, something like that. So, <coughs> basically, uh, Belgrant simulates uh, what kernel does for system work. System work. Uh, the difference is that uh, as I said, our Belgrant interrupt uh, client text and uh, it uh, mapped in the process and uh, it uh, reads uh, instructions and execute one by one. And uh, resistors are also um, allocated in the same process uh, address space. <coughs> uh, so uh, basically it's <coughs> so um uh, most of system calls are just uh passed to real corner uh, for example um Um, if client wants to read some file, Belgrin, of course, has to read uh, some file descriptor, uh, some data from kernel. Otherwise, it cannot pass that data back to a client. <coughs> and. Uh, Yes, basically, uh, it's just modified reads or uh, system call. And when it Belgrin meets uh, system call instructions, it checks uh, machine state, uh, struct, 
and uh, its contents has uh, arguments to system calls. So it can know uh, what uh, debug target wants to pass to kernel as arguments. And of course, later uh, it has to uh, return return values as a uh, system call return values via uh, registers. So bare green the fields uh, client must state and choose or uh, write registers and uh, fields it. And uh, internally, it actually calls a uh, system call uh, against kernel. And it, uh, those wrappers are written. Uh, Bergwind has its own uh, wrappers to call um, real system calls because um, it Yes, um, if when Bargrin sees client system call instructions, it's, it's running Bargrin code, it's Bargrin kernel. But uh, when Bargrin executes real system call, it's for, it's for client, client debug target. So it has to carefully swap context and uh, when it uh, actually uh, calls real system call it carefully uh, reads register values from uh, client machine state structure to and uh, move them into real registers and just call it uh, and after that carefully restores register values back into Machine state. Okay. Um, so um, you have to carefully implement these assembly wrappers. I'm sorry for just <laughs> include the code. But uh, it basically, um, you see th there is SIGMask. Uh, it has to block all signals um, during calling system call. Um, signal has uh, many problems and um, I will I will explain later, but uh, uh, it's basically bare green uh, pole signals. It does not accept um, signals. And uh, it wants to control all signals explicitly, so uh, it basically blocks all signals during um, system call. Then later, uh, this uh, instructions is just uh, looking into structures and uh, assign into real register to pass uh, them as arguments. And uh, and you have to set a system call number two, of course. And this is a real system, system call. And later uh, you had to uh, put back registers into some structure and uh, again um, restore signal pro signal mask and uh, done. <coughs> um, Bergrind has uh, many where well, uh, it can um, have hooks for all system calls uh, Bergrin tracks uh, memory read write when memory is written or it's read. And it's easy for our uh, user programs, but uh, it has no knowledge. It cannot know uh, 
it has no knowledge what memory is written or read by kernel. So uh, if without this uh, knowledge and uh, very if uh, some memory is written by kernel uh, in system call and uh, a user application try to read those memories, if without this knowledge is very within the um, mistake in the reports that you are uh, you are touching uh, um, initialized memory like that so uh, we have to teach all this information for all system calls this is a little messy and uh, if current these system calls conditionally uh, read or write it's much much more complicated and uh, it's this um, it's impossible to maintain perfectly <coughs> okay next um exactly uh, when as i said uh when uh Bergrind executes to debug target program what it does is actually uh, exactly it has to create a uh, initial process image and execute. So, um, Bear Green calls this uh, operation uh, init image and it calls uh, just image. And uh, So uh, initial process image is something like it's um, just process memory uh, contents and initial registers and upper process resources, which is uh, stored in a kernel and struct process in OpenBSD and Structbook. Um, depending on operating systems, uh, there are many process resources <coughs> so uh, initial uh, memory image is has a uh, text of course and database VSS areas uh, which which can be mapped uh, by parsing or uh, elf program header uh, it has a uh, road entries so uh, for kernels, uh, kernel has um, elf header parser in kernel and uh, it parses and look for uh, those road entries and uh, internally uh, map uh, those uh, V node uh, area files uh, into, into process address space. And, and the initial process image has a uh, stack with uh, arguments and environments and um, auxiliary information for dynamic link, uh, which uh, these are metadata for processes to uh, initialize uh, init initialize a uh, program uh, to set up uh, things for our main con main pro sorry main function these are done by a uh, start co start called in user run so uh, there is a um, hidden uh, ABI there is hidden pro promises between kernel exec and our uh, start code in user run Um, of course, there are uh, registers which are used to pass parameters 
from corner to our start code. Like this. <coughs> um, so our exec VE. Um, so around this development, I had to uh, understand uh, exec VE come function in corner to uh, simulate it on background and I had to figure out uh, which part I need and which part I don't need. So, but uh, when I looked at uh, the exec B function uh, in NetBSD at the time, it was wrong function, which, and uh, it has, I had no idea which is needed and uh, dependency was unable to understand, so I could not figure out, uh, I could not help uh, uh, splitting those wrong function into small functions. It was, it was fun. <laughs> and, uh, and another problem is uh, all BSDs have slightly different uh, AVIs for this. Um, for application, XSB, of course, uh, is standard function, but uh, as I said, uh, it has a hidden AVI, hidden promise uh, from kernel, between kernel and the start code, and what content to put on stack and what uh, values in registers they are not documented and slightly different among BSDs, which, and um, those differences, <coughs> I could not see any benefit one over one. Uh, they are just different for no reason, so it's strange. So uh, to initialize a uh, process, you had to fail uh, these things. And uh, typically, um, traditional BSD has um, on stock uh, argc and argv and the env environment and uh, all AUX info uh, for uh, mainly a dynamic linker and uh, those strings on stack. And um, of course, our initial stack pointer has to point uh, on top of those um, exec arguments. But uh, as I said, uh, there are few difference, um, difference between uh, among BSDs, uh, how where to put uh, stack and alignment and uh, how to pass uh, arguments. For example, NetBSD has uh, PS strings, which is just a, or a little duplicate of uh, pointers of, uh, connected to uh, argv and the env and argc and I count of M strings in just one struct and uh, try to pass address of that via registers, which is, I'm not sure it's helpful, but uh, not really useful. Really, uh, OpenBase doesn't have that. So I, I had to adjust all those differences and carefully implement it. Otherwise, things don't, doesn't work. And Bergwind has to simulate um, this exec VE uh, precisely. So uh, again, uh, it has Bergwind runs or target debug program within the same process uh, address space, 
and it has a client machine state or register content in its uh, memory space. So basically, uh, it, it sets uh, content in machine state structure, and it has to uh, fill a client stock uh, exactly uh, the target device, a target process uh, expect, expects. <clears throat> okay, 15 minutes. Um, signal. Um, signal is insta interesting thing, and uh, uh, I think all of you like signal. <coughs> uh, I th for me, uh, it was, I have little knowledge of, about signal, and uh, I didn't read uh, any code, signal code in kernel, but uh, I had to understand it, and uh, now I like it. <coughs> and uh, yes, uh, oh. signal is basically uh, a same same as um, system core. It's basically a trap, and uh, for application, it's it looks like a function. It a fun if you press uh, ask um, kernel um, be a C action. A sig action function, and as Kone just call this function when a sig uh, is triggered. But uh, from Kone's point of view, it's a kind of trap, and just um, uh, yes. <coughs> Sorry. Um, it's special in some ways for Kernel. Uh, basically, a uh, Kernel uh, just restores application uh, user and state when it uh, it's uh, triggered uh, by hardware interrupt. Uh, except one exception was system call. And another exception was uh, exec, uh, which uh, these, these are uh, Q uh, exceptions when a kernel transfers <laughs> user and uh, which is just not restoring uh, con original context. And um, When uh, this is about um, signal handler, uh, signal handler uh, in user space. <coughs> so uh, when application asks kernel to call signal handlers uh, instead of just uh, exit processes. Um, Kernel has to set up a uh, context uh, temporarily to call uh, those client signal handler function. Uh, this is done by um, allocating, sorry, uh, executing uh, a small code uh, called a uh, small code called a uh, signal trampling. It's just only a few some uh, instructions just to call signal handler and uh, just return back to kernel. And the uh, signal trampling uh, expects uh, some arguments from kernel which is put uh, on stock. And from application's point of view, it's just called uh, just this signal handler function is called, and when it exits, 
uh, original context is just restored. But um, during that, kernel has to uh, save uh, context, the original context, and uh, execute 100, and uh, again restore uh, the original context. And the original context are uh, uh, typically uh, saved uh, onto the stack. Otherwise, uh, Kani has no space to rest save that information. <coughs> and uh, of course, uh, these, there are uh, hidden ABI promises between uh, signal handlers and Kahn. And they are slightly different among BSDs. This is a uh, trampling code for our free base of FreeBSD IMG64, which is uh, in kernel. And uh, um, only a few lines of uh, assembly code, but and uh, these are copied into uh, user space when uh, executing signal handler. And uh, you see uh, this expect, expect that um, actual signal handler uh, address is stored on top of a stack. This is our ABI. <coughs> For OpenBSD, uh, or it also has signal code in kernel and copies those code onto a client uh, user space stack. And this one um, expects a signal handler address in RAX register, which is different from FreeBSD. Uh, NetBSD is slightly different and special that uh, in that it implements signal trampling in user end for some reason. Um, so this code is co uh, this fragmental code is called uh, called after a uh, signal handler exits. This is put carefully and as a return code of signal handler. Slightly different. And Bergrind has a unique strategy uh, to handle signal for clients. Basically, it uh, blocks all signals and uh, pulls signals uh, when it wants to, using a single weight info, a system call. But you cannot uh, block uh, synchronous signals like uh, segmentation fault. And how it, it works internally is very difficult. I will, tr I will explain later. And the uh, problem thing, um, Barry Green had no notion to copy executable code at runtime. Um, it may be possible, but uh, free BCD people decided to avoid that and uh, provide a trampling from user. This is like uh, how NetBSD does. But it turned, it works. And um, when um, returning back to corner, a user run cannot uh, really return back to corner. It just calls a uh, fake uh, return uh, system call, SIG return system call, and it's only handled, handled by Bergwind. So this uh, <coughs> ah, a bit simplified. <laughs> you can basically uh, it has to Bergwind has to simulate uh, what kernel does. And uh, OK, this is 
for all synchronous signals like uh, segmentation fault. And uh, this is very, very difficult to handle. And uh, actually, uh, very green uh, uh, um, As I said, uh, Bergen basically uh, blocks uh, all signals uh, if possible, and um, it receives other process, other signals like synchronous, and those con conditions are sta stable. Sorry, uh, static. Um, when application want to block uh, some synchronous signals. Bergrind manages, uh, Bergrind has, uh, it remembers those signal masks internally, but still uh, configure kernel in the static manner. So, so basically, Bergrind has a uh, static uh, information internally. And um, when Bergwind receives a synchronous signal while doing uh, execution, it jumps to uh, where? Sorry. <coughs> okay. Okay. You can read this in this paper, it's uh, unpublished. But basically, uh, it uh, handles a receives signal and um, wrong jump out of that context. And try to the uh, executing schedule uh, from there. And actually, uh, execute or client signal handler from within schedule. Okay. So uh, I had just one minute. I had to change a um, base base operating system to make uh, bargaining work. One needs uh, um, system control. Uh, system control. Okay, sorry. <coughs> okay, to one minute to summarize. Uh, I could manage to work to make uh, bargaining work, almost work, but I still need a lot of work to support all system calls. <coughs> bargaining is good for uh, users and uh, it's good uh, as far as it works for users, but uh, internally, uh, for developers, it needs a lot of work and uh, to, main to maintain. <laughs> <laughs>